All right, everyone. You know, nothing like starting on time. We always welcome everyone uh, to be with us, but we're going to put you in the catbird seat. We want to put you in and pretend you are a seller right now, because if you're trying to buy and sell at the same time, we're going to focus a lot on the selling. Uh, buying is a matter of finding the house that works, and we're going to briefly discuss how to finance that if you're buying and selling at the same time. But today, um, it's a rock fight out there if you're trying to buy. It's hard. You have to be with a great agent who has wonderful strategies. Um, but this one's really going to be all things you need to do to prepare and a checklist to make it all happen. So I just want you to all sit there mentally and say to yourself, you know, if I asked you, how do you, uh, on a scale of one to 10, how do you rate your house? All of you um, are starting to think, you know, between one and 10, where it stands. But then if I really raise the stakes and I said, you know, how's your location? Do you have the latest amenities? And, you know, how um, energy efficient are you? Uh, is it trendy and light and neutral and all freshly painted? What are the latest finishes for hardware, tile, flooring, and all of those things? Um, is it perfectly staged and decluttered and ready to go? Does it smell fresh and is it clean? Uh, is it spotless? You know, these things are really important. How do you rate your house? Well, I don't know what is in your brain right now, but we can tell you that the standard average answer is a seven. Most people do consider their house to be pretty good or very good on this scale. And, you know, everyone thinks their house is better than average. It's, it's like our children, we all think they're better than average. So the real key thing is, what would it take to make it a 10? And we ask that question so you can think about, quite frankly, what, what are the things that buyers are going to see that make them think, Oh, that needs work. It's not as good as it could be, and whether it's your systems or your wallpaper or how old your kitchen is or whatever it might be. What would it take to make it a 10? So that's the frame work we're going to start with today is what are the things that you need to do to really up your game if you're going to go on the market? And uh, we have some really fun uh, slides in our listing presentation. Here's uh, Miley Cyrus, you know, an absolute, you know, star, a celebrity, someone who hits the stage. She's absolutely beautiful, just like your home is. But what happens when we put the lights on, when we uh, do professional photography, when she's all made up and in costume, it's a totally different effect. And this, in fact, is what we do for houses. Um, today, you see, uh, when you're looking online and you're looking for a house, you're naturally drawn to the ones that have the sex appeal, that are all um, staged and ready to go. And I like this as an example, particularly because what happens to this guy if we think of him as a house? If in fact we think of him like, what would happen if we decluttered him? What would happen if we painted him? What would happen if we staged him? And this is what happens. We declutter him, he gets a haircut, you know, paint him a little bit on top and we stage him. You have a totally different look. And this is again, what we do with houses so that you can attract the most buyers. Uh, we all admire Scarlett Johansson as a really great actress. What I love is that she gets on Facebook and says, this is what I really look like before all of the professional celebrity treatment. And we can treat your house like a celebrity too by putting on the makeup, giving you the right costume, the light and photography. And this is what happens. And human nature, we can't help it. This, we do find this attractive when people are all done up and they're ready for the show. This is showtime. When you go on the market, you're inviting people over. It's like getting ready for a big party. So one of the things we like to talk about is the miracle of paint. These are the least costly of all transformation. We always say paint is another word for clean. And what can you do uh, in your house to fix it up? So, you know, we painted this place up and fixed it up. These are real leading edge houses that we transformed and we have our ghost service we'll talk about later to help you. Um, you know, back in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it was the rage to have a burgundy dining room, a Merlot dining room, all these red dining rooms, but it isn't hip and sexy today. So what happens when we paint it in those light neutral colors, add a little staging, pop in a new 
trendy light um, and a little bit of extra staging on those um, chair rails, at, uh, the wall rails, the, I think they're the china rails actually, um, and a little rug gives you a totally different impression. Hey, everyone loves natural wood cabinets. Why is anyone painting natural wood? I know 10, 15 years from now, we're gonna be saying, why did we paint it? However, it's what people are looking for today. And we know when you're selling, you'll get more money if you paint your cabinets. Here's a standard brick wall. These are those funny rooms in those 1930s and 40s and 50s houses that you'll see uh, dispersed throughout New England, but no one ever knows what to do with them. They're not very inviting. We've got some really bad paneling there. Um, it just doesn't look like a place you wanna hang out with that dirty, crummy rug. What happens when we uh, lift the rug and find wood floors and paint? You can, if you look carefully at the paint in that, you can see that the brick is just painted, uh, painted the shelf, added a little decor, got a fire going in the fireplace, changed the curtain a little bit. It transforms a space. And it definitely, it, these kind of projects, we never recommend you do anything unless you're going to get three to five times the investment we're looking for very good return on investment. Um, here's a, a, a dining room, you know, perfectly fine, good dining room, a little bit of wallpaper a natural wood, um, a very classic standard chandelier. And this is what happens when we've painted it, staged it and popped in a new light. This is a great space. Um, the wood beam ceilings were very hip in the seventies. Um, look at that uh, Chase Lounge. Hey, how cozy is that? But it's not the kind of furniture that you'll find in a Pinterest board. This is what happens when it's professionally staged and you paint it up a little bit. Always worth doing. And then a better camera angle. When you have good photography, people who know what they're doing, it is really fantastic. So <clears throat> staging, you know, there's nothing wrong with the house on the left. It it looks great. You can just move yourself in. It is all clean and freshly painted and uh, the floors are gleaming, a cool little light fixture. But this is what happens when staged. People can see how to use the house. They can see where to put things down, how they're gonna live there. They're envisioning their dinner parties in the dining room. This is important. Uh, this is a place in Back Bay. What happens when we painted it and staged it? Here's a uh, bedroom, not quite ready for primetime photos. A new duvet cover, all cleaned up, a little sitting area. Look how we've um, removed the curtains and uh, brought them all up. We like to let the light in. That's really important. We're gonna talk about that later. Here we've got a beautiful fireplace. And this is another uh, Beacon Hill condo. There you go, transformed. People love the before and after photos. Now. You don't really want to spend the money on actual staging. Uh, we have a company that will virtually stage the house. That furniture does not exist, but it does. That kind of money is very well spent just to make you more attractive online. Face it, we're during COVID. Um, there's a lot more virtual showing. People are selecting houses without going in them. And this is an opportunity to make, you know, put your best foot forward. Here's another example great windows in this house, but really they're highlighted with the furniture. Um, you know, sometimes you need a little landscaping. Sometimes you have to find that house. That's what happened here. Just another paint job. It's a miracle. So when I say it's all about the photos, what I want to tell you is that when a leading edge agent goes to market your house, we work from when will we have photos of your house? The entire calendar of marketing is built on when do we have the photos? So even at the first listing appointment, one of the things we might ask is, okay, when will you be photo ready? And you have to lead up to that. Well, to be photo ready, you need to have the house cleaned. You need to have it staged if you choose to do that. Uh, maybe if you're doing painting or refreshing a kitchen or bath, um, you'll have to address those things and then stage and clean and get ready for the photo shoot. Because without the photos, we can't build any of the marketing materials, the brochures, the internet, the social media photos and um, marketing that we do is really important. And again, it's all about the photos because people don't read, they like to look at the pictures. Um, 
So one of the things I think we call it our picture perfect photo shoot checklist. And I will tell you that although it's the photo shoot checklist, the reason I think it is so invaluable is that it really is all the things you need to do to get your house ready. So if you are with a leading edge agent, um, they can get this to you. We're going to send this out to everyone who's on this call. Um, but you know, what's the pre-shoot? Well, on the exterior, you know, clean up the yard, weed the flower beds, cut the grass and trim the bushes, add mulch, add seasonal plants. Do you need to pressure wash the exterior or paint it? The patios, the decks and walkways, they clear the debris on the front porch, clean outdoor furniture or lawn decor. You have to clean all the windows and doors, touch up the painting at the exterior thresholds. You know, when you open a door for someone and it's just crummy or full of handprints or it's all scuffed on the threshold, it just looks like it's not cared for. Those entryways, those first impressions are so important. And in the interior, here's your checklist. Remove the clutter from each room, clear out the stacks of paper and excess items on shelves, tables and on the floors. Check to make sure all the lights are working. Uh, lighting is really important. We leave all the lights on, even in broad daylight, because people don't realize it's artificial and a house feels uh, clean and full of light and happier when all the lights are on. Uh, so you um, deep clean all the rooms, clean the carpets, wipe down walls, baseboards, clean the windows and window seals, scrub the floors and bathroom grout. And let me tell you, bathroom grout, everybody's going to come into your house and pull the shower curtain back. And if that grout is crappy, it just looks crappy, but boy, if you just clean it up with a little caulking gun, um, I am the most unhandy person on earth and even I can do that as a job. So easy to do. Give the light switches and cabinet doors a good cleaning as well, just so it sparkles. So <clears throat> it's photo day. Things you need to think about is, make sure cars aren't parked in the driveway or directly in front of your house. Uh, keep the garbage cans, garden hoses, sprinklers, lawn mowers, and any other garden or landscape tools out of sight. Remove toys, pool items, anything from the outdoor space. Fluff the pillows and cushions on the patio furniture. Um, sweep the walkways, the front porch. You know, the kind of things you do when you're getting ready for a party, right? Move the leaves, debris, etc. So in general, <clears throat> open all the curtains or set the blinds midway so they're just even throughout the house. Uh, or all the way up. I like them either way. I have to say um, the person who wrote this likes them halfway. I tend to like them all the way up. Uh, turn all the lights on, including lamps, keep ceiling fans off. No one wants to see the wires, the cable wires, um, the extension cords. Make sure that is all tied up in an elastic band or tucked behind furniture or under a desk. It just looks so nice. Clear pet toys, dishes, um, all their uh, pet beds and uh, pet blankets all the way. And then keep all the televisions and computers off, hide the remote controls that is not pretty on that table. And then the dining room and the kitchen. Hey, you know, it is miserable to have your house go on the market and have your listing agent, we're just so mean, say to you, listen, we want the coffee maker off the counter. Uh, can you remove the toaster? It looks almost dysfunctional, but if you go on Pinterest and you see kitchens, they are totally dysfunctional. They've got beautiful bowls of lemons and bottles of San Pellegrino and fresh flowers. It makes all the difference. Nobody wants to see your sponges. Um, I actually bought a hus my most recent dishwasher. I can't stand the look of, you know, we all put the um, kitchen towel over the handle of the dishwasher. I hate that look. Um, so I had to buy a dishwasher where it didn't have the handle. So my husband didn't do that. We don't want it in the photos for sure. Keep the trash cans out of sight. Um, nothing on the refrigerator. The refrigerator is naked. Okay, for fun, maybe one precious photo of that, uh, you know, a young child in your life put on there. But for the most part, it should be naked for the photos at least. Um, you might want to add a centerpiece to the dining room or kitchen table or to the countertops. Um, we love fresh flowers. Uh, we have been known to go to Trader Joe's, pick up a couple of orchids, and then we just move them from room to room throughout the photo shoot. It just looks nice in the bathroom, in your bedroom, um, in the dining room, in the living room. Uh, you can't have enough flowers when it comes time to selling. I know when I sold, I bought so many white orchids, someone behind me in Trader Joe's asked, are you having a wedding? And I was not. Uh, let's see, the bedrooms and bathrooms. Hey, wipe down all those personal items from around the sink. Your bathroom, no one wants to see your toothbrush 
or what kind of deodorant you use or anything. Everything needs to be put away, countertops and vanities completely clear. Uh, find a home for everything. When you open the bathroom, you know, at least for the photo shoot, if we're gonna be opening things up, remove the shampoo, the soaps, your razor, etc. cetera. Um, always put the toilet uh, lid down. We will tell you that uh, agents love to get a good chuckle of, did you see that photo at that house? They left the toilet lid up. It's just, you know, just doesn't leave a good first impression. Um, of course, clear the floors, make the beds, um, all your personal effects on your night tables, gone, 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 gone. You know, your little alarm clock maybe, uh, we even hide, you know, all the cords that you go to bed with for your um, phone or your watch charger, out of sight. And then uh, do uh, make arrangements for your pet to be off the property during the photo shoot. You just don't want Fido or, or, or Paws running around, getting in photos, uh, knocking anything over with the photographer. Always smart to do it. So what we can do with your kitchen, here we go. I mean, your bathroom, I'm sorry, your bathroom. See what happens when we paint the cabinets and we put on a new countertop? We even have an epoxy surface for your floor. We went right over the tiles, uh, put in a new toilet, and is just completely transformed. For big projects, um, you can go to, um, uh, you know, there's lots of IKEA projects. This entire kitchen cost just about $20,000. Now that did not include labor, but that was all the cabinets, the handles, the countertops, the appliances, the lights, um, everything you could put into that kitchen. And it looked great. Probably run you another $20,000 um, to have the workmen put it together, do the electric, the plumbing, uh, assemble the cabinets is a big deal. Uh, and uh, we discovered a hardwood floor underneath the linoleum, which is always fun. How does the money work? Now we did an entire seminar, it was our first seminar on how does the money work when you're trying to buy and sell at the same time? Well, I'm gonna give you a minute and a half synopsis. Virtually everyone now is sitting, I mean, just this year alone, our market's now up 14% from last year, from when the pandemic started in general. Now, uh, your neighborhood may be different, different. it might be 12%, it might be 18%. But the market is up virtually everywhere, unless you're in downtown Boston condos, which are still up, even though the demand has not been as great as it has been for the suburbs. Now, how does the money work? <clears throat> there, we have financing options for people who feel like, I need to sell first. But if you need to sell first, you don't know where you're going. You're, you could be left homeless. Uh, and by the way, as the market's going up, that house that you are buying could get more expensive as you hang out in the Marriott Residence Inn or with your in-laws. We do recommend if you can buy first, there's so many smart reasons to do that. And we have bridge loan products. We can help you with a HELOC. We know the banks that you can talk to, talk to your leading edge agent. We have absolutely fabulous resources for you to move forward. Um, if you move first, you know, there's so many great things. First of all, if you buy first and you want to do a little work before you move in, um, a lot of these financing options will actually give you the money to do a little work on top of that so that you can move in with fresh floors and painting your new house. But it also allows you to get out of Dodge, leave the house you're in, leave it in the good hands of a leading edge agent who will work our miracles. We'll take care of whatever needs to be done that we agree upon. Now, how much money do you want to spend on getting your house ready? Because again, we won't ask you to spend any money that we don't think will have at least a three to five times return. In other words, if you spend 20, you should get 60 to 100 back. If you spend 30, you should get 90 to 150 back. That's the ballpark of what makes sense. We wouldn't ask you to spend money that you weren't gonna get back. And today we are looking at, uh, as I've said earlier, it's a rock fight out there if you want to buy a home I was just analyzing one of our markets yesterday and just looking at what our agents did. I said, oh, this house sold 7% over asking. Wow, this house sold 17% over asking. And the one that blew me away because it was an average house in that market. In other words, it was priced exactly at what, almost a little bit, a teeny bit under the average price. This was in Winchester. Um, got 27% over asking. 
um, demand is huge out there. And if you can leave and we can make it perfect, the more beautiful you make it look, the more people want your house and the more people want it, and that drives the price. And um, next week I will tell you, we are discussing pricing. How do we price your house in this market? So 10 things sellers should consider when you're gonna be going in the market. Do you have too much furniture? One, two, is it not thoroughly clean? It deep clean everything, it, that pays for itself. Do you have clutter on display? Are there things that you need to move out, get off countertops, um, bookshelves that need to be cleared out um, on top of, you know, there's always that pile when you walk into a house where you put your keys, et cetera. Everything needs to be gone. Do you have dark paint colors? That's not trendy today. You can love them and somebody else will love them. But I'm just telling you now that if you paint in today's hip trendy colors, you will make more money. Uh, make sure you get rid of any personal photos. Have they been left out? Is there not enough light? Do you need to open up the windows and open up the blinds? Are there any household smells? <laughs> um, I, you know, the worst thing that can happen to a seller is if you have pets and somebody can come into your house and smell that you have pets before they see them. Oftentimes, if you live with a pet smell, you don't smell it. You are totally adjusted to it. Uh, you've, um, it's just part of your home life. So ask a trusted friend, can they smell that you have cats? Nothing worse than old cats who might have been, excuse me, but old cats who are no longer, who are incontinent can absolutely ruin floors. They will go through the carpet and there is no way to fix cat smell from urine except for to rip up the floors. So um, that is always an issue. Mm. Sometimes people, when they furnish their house, they stick the couches and everything up against the walls. I don't know if you can see behind me, but my none of my furniture is up against the walls. The things behind it, it's brought in so it's sitting areas. So we would ask you to consider setting up groupings with your furniture. Um, do you have unorganized closets and storage? Go through those linen closets, go through all of your cabinetry, anything that anyone would open, even your kitchen cabinets, line up the plates again, get them all in order. It just feels great. It's, you know, when you walk into Crate and Barrel and everything is organized, you know, that's why you want to buy the stuff. <laughs> um, do you have too many items on your kitchen counters? So I'd say those are the 10 things that are the number one way you can uh, increase the value of your house. Um, just want to let everyone know that about our GO service. We at Leading Edge have developed a full service where we can help you do anything to your house that needs to be done. And we get reimbursed at closing. So moving is hard. We make it simple. Contact me for the easy way to get to where you want to go. Listen, we have a curated team that takes care of anything so you can just move on. And again, your home's preparation costs are paid back at closing. So go now, sell later are the financing opportunities that I alluded to earlier. Uh, you know, with that, you become a very attractive buyer. You're no longer have to make an offer contingent on the sale of your house. And that is just dead on arrival. If you today were to present an offer contingent on the sale of your house, um, a seller would go with another offer who could perform. Um, that's why it's really important during this, if you're thinking about buying and selling, that you start doing everything you can to get your house ready to market, even before you find a house, so that that transition into buying and selling is going to go so much better if you've done all the heavy lifting, sorted through all of the things. Is it staying or going now? So whatever you do, don't sell to one of those, you know, we buy unpretty houses kind of operations. Too many people out there are going to sound like, listen, you don't have to do anything. We will pay cash for your property. You can uh, pick a closing date. We don't even care if you get rid of everything because we'll make this great offer. We'll pay you fair market value and you can move on. The problem is that they don't pay fair market value. They are totally stealing your equity. Those discounts are often 30 to 40%. And they make you feel bad about your house and like, this is a great deal for you. It's not because all they're going to do is buy your house and do the things we recommend and put it back on the market and make the money that should be in your pocket. Here's our little 
fun jingly commercial. You want to sell your home and maybe buy another. So what's stopping you? Too busy to get it ready? Who isn't? Maybe it needs some work. Maybe a lot of work. Who has time or money for that? But you can't buy something else until you sell. What to do? Tap into Go Service from your leading edge real estate agent. Go Service will take care of all the hassles of selling for you so you can get going. We provide cleaning, junk removal, painting, kitchen and bath updates, repairs, landscaping, professional staging, even pack and move services. You pay nothing until you close on your sale. Think you can't buy a house without selling yours first? With Go Service, you can. We have financing options that will make you an attractive buyer. Buy the house you want, then we take complete care of selling your home. Sell then buy or buy then sell. Either way, Go Service can simplify your move. Learn more from your Leading Edge real estate agent today or visit leadingedgeagents.com. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Next week, we're doing How Accurate Is My Zestimate? All of our pricing strategies, we're, we're going to share with you how we price homes. Uh, what kind of data do we use? Um, how do we make these things up? Uh, well, Andrea, thank you. You've been a, uh, a regular on this series. I'm thrilled you could join us. Uh, are there any questions? I'll just go to the chat quick to see if anybody has anything to say. Let's see. Uh, when do you make your recommendations for improvements to the home? Do you provide the cost to have your contractors do these projects? What is the benefit of a seller using your contractors versus finding your own? Listen, if you have your own and you love them, you should use them. Um, we Each agent has their own people that they love and that really deliver. I would say the only advantage of using like mine is that my contractors, the contractors that we have on part of, part of Leading Edge, they do this for a living. They, they will come in and they say, they understand preparing a house for sale. But if you get a checklist with your uh, people, with your contractors, they can do whatever needs to be done, whether it's the paint or putting on new countertops, et cetera. We just happen to have people who will do it and get paid at closing, or you can pay them directly. I will tell you, Gail, that it always costs a little bit more if you um, if the vendors are paid at closing, because I know these are just local independent guys who are often making payroll on their own home equity. So there's usually a little bit of a higher charge. I would say 10%. So if you did $30,000 worth of work, if um, we arranged to have it paid for at closing, it would cost you probably 33. So I just want to be really upfront and transparent about that. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, we would definitely, we, we don't spend any money without your approval. We would always ask you, you know, here we, is what we think is the best return on your investment. Let's get a quote on that before we proceed. Um, and then, yeah, we have a, but I bet even just after this presentation, Gail, you have a good inner sense of what needs to happen. So uh, we're very, very happy to help you. Um, we will get those checklists out to everybody uh, that was with us today. Um, and I want to say thank you again for joining me. If you have any other questions, just let us know and we can make up some answers. Take care. Bye-bye.